I was about 10 years old at the time when this happened. I was lying in my bed reading a book. I had semi see-through curtains, those thin white kind that you can barely see through. And my bed faced the window with my door to the right of me. I was lying in bed reading my book for a school project that I had due. I stayed up a bit later than I usually do with complete silence outside, with no trees by my window and rocks covering all the side of the ground outside. I'm reading my book when, all of a sudden, I hear footsteps about 20 feet or so from my window which I just figured it was my neighbor, since his house is only 15 feet from mine. But it was strange because I heard no door open while their door is fairly loud. I waited for it to be gone but it kept coming closer, I don't know why, but I didn't get up to tell my parents then and there. It was probably because I thought my dad was outside since he burns the paper recycling out back sometimes. The footsteps got louder and stopped at my window for a split second while I heard a on my window. My heart jumped when I saw a silhouette of a man through my curtains, about six feet tall and who continued to walk towards my backyard. I ran to my parents and told them the incident, but they said it was probably a bird, I tried to tell them birds don't just tap on your window. I slept in my living room that night trying to rub it off. I was five to six years old when me and my family moved into this large house. The first time we went there, I was extremely excited. But the moment we stepped forward, inside the gates, there was a back door on the left. I didn't think much of it but I was getting butterflies and got scared a little. While my family was trying to open the door, I looked on the back left door not going inside. Out of fear, I suddenly spoke without thinking and said, is it me, or the back door there feels like someone is looking at us. My family didn't think much of it and laughed it off while I was still looking at the back door. Fast forward a few weeks, everything was going well and nothing really happened much, except every night when we are all going to sleep, always one of us had to go close the lights from the first floor. When it was my turn to close the lights, I had to walk over 20 feet away from the stairs and close the lights in fear. It felt like someone was watching me from the kitchen. During that week, I was the only one who kept having nightmares and sleep paralysis about a boy sitting beside me without any eyes, floating with his upper body. I didn't tell anyone about the boy except for my little sister who was three. My parents didn't know about it yet since they would just tell me it's just my imagination. I soon named him Charlie because I thought of Charlotte and knew he needed a proper name since it was a girl name. So then on, me and my little sister played with Charlie which my siblings didn't find it weird and thought nothing about it. Two months later, me and my sister found our old camera and wanted to take a video. We took a video on the second floor with one light opened and then once we were done filming, she looked through the footage and then she told me she found a shadow figure going through the last room. I followed her and thinking maybe she was messing around with me because she was a prankster. She swore that she saw it and I believed her about 30%. And that same month I got sick and dizzy. It was night time and I slept at 2 in the morning which was unhealthy at my age. I was in a nightmare that I couldn't recall but I do remember there was a jail cell, or something with some dead people from the past decade and some were alive. That morning, I kept waking up and whenever I would, I kept crying and saying my favorite cartoon TV shows trying to calm myself down. Not only that happened, but all of us got sick monthly one by one. I also did remember waking up with scratches behind my back, and my dad and I, would wake up with the same scratches at the same time. I was then 8 when we left that house and thankfully, we didn't get sick anymore and no more paranormal activities that happened. 
while I told the story about the little boy named Charlie, my mom told something about a little boy she saw in that house that looked like my brother. She told me that this boy came up to her and told her something. She looked behind her back and saw that my brother was sitting down at the couch, when she looked back, the boy was gone. Our oldest sister also said that the garage doorknob wouldn't stop trying to open by itself. But it felt like I was the only one who didn't hear those noises at 3 a.m. We also got robbed twice and we never got our valuables back. Thank God now that we left that house, we didn't get any sick and no more scratching noises that can be heard at 3 in the morning. But I still think about the little boy to this day. I used to live in a normal looking house. I lived here from ages 2 to 6. I lived with my mom, dad, and sister. The house had a nice backyard, nice plants in the front, nice kitchen, nice bathroom, etc. The landlord said amazing things about the house, except for the fact that the house was old. It's house 49, on Hancock Street Haverhill, Massachusetts we would always get these chilling events while living in the house. It was 1 am and I was sleeping peacefully in my room, at that time I was 3. I felt a slight tap on my shoulder and I woke up. My mom said to me, hi Carlos. Come downstairs for a second. In my half asleep state, I answer, ok mommy. I walked down the stairs to the first floor but before I could go all the way down the stairs, my sister pulls me back up the stairs. My sister's room is right next to mine and she was 13 at the time, Carlos, do not go downstairs. Please. But mommy said, do. Not, go, downstairs. She replied angrily, but why? I replied, scared. That's not mommy. Did you see mommy's face or just heard her voice? Only voice. Then don't go downstairs. If you do, big monster will eat you up. I jumped away in fear, ran back in my room with the blanket over me, while Mariah, my sister, ran back into hers. When I went downstairs in the morning, my mom was still asleep and there were gloves and a knife sitting on the kitchen table. I don't know how my sister knew not to go downstairs, but I can still hear her voice telling me to go there. She always says in a whispered tone. This was when I was 6 and addicted to Mario on the Wii. I was happily playing when the door started opening and closing. I assumed it was Mariah so I said, Mariah stop I'm playing Mario. It just kept going. I decided to open the door only to find no one. Then I remembered that Mariah was at school, my mom was working, and my dad was sleeping. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Consider subscribing. All of the links to the authors will be in the description below. Faceless. Voiceless.